watch. Wake up. You got fire to watch. This is Pancho. Do you read me? Be advised, you are coming in weak and unreadable. Say again, Con Tower. This is Pancho. Do you read me, okay? Pancho, this is Con Tower. I read you Lima Charlie. Con Tower, Con Tower. Request permission to launch and commence the field up. Over. Stand by. Pancho, permission granted. Say again, permission granted. Pancho, that. Launching podcast in three, two. You are now entering the field up with your host, Pacho Correa, Chief Warrant Officer 3, United States Marine Corps retired. Get some. Hurrah! Get some. Hurrah! What's going on, everybody? Another week is almost over. Friday night's Eve, baby Friday. God damn, thank God is the weekend. Hey, uh, we got a pretty good show uh, today. A couple of good stories uh, as well. Um, Let's get all the pleasantries out of the way. This show is brought to you by Primerica. Hey, did you know that if you have your kids account started, you can even start a college account or a kids account before uh, before they're actually born. Uh, all you you know, all you need to do is just start start you know putting it putting in there and putting their money with eighteen. You put eighteen thousand dollars there. And uh, you or you, you know, your kids start saving and they put eighteen thousand dollars. And let's say by the time they're, you know, 23, 24, you let that money sit until they retire. By the time they're 65, they will have over two million dollars in that account and they can literally pretty much not work from that point on. So if you want to find out more, more about how money works, please, please, please DM me on the show. We will get there. As a matter of fact, at nine nine o'clock Eastern time today, they are having a, a thirty minute Zoom call on great information as to how to save money, make money, and set yourself up for success. So it's all it's all on the show link bio. By the way, I did shorten the I did listen to Brian. I shortened the the link the link uh, right there for the folks at Primerica. Check it out. Send them an email. They'll get you all spun and taken care of. Next, we're also sponsored by the VA, so here's an awesome message by Mike Richmond. This message is from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Did you serve in the military? If so, you can obtain a free lifetime pass to more than 2,000 federal recreation sites. These sites are located across more than 400 million acres of public lands, including national parks, wildlife refuges, and forests. The lands host activities to fit any lifestyle, hiking, biking, fishing, camping, and much more. Gold Star families are also eligible for these free lifetime passes. Plus, they cover entrance fees for a driver and all passengers in a car, or up to three additional adults at sites that charge per person. Obtaining one is easy. Just go to the National Park Service website, nps.gov, or the National Park Service app. Nice. Hey, depending on the state and what your disability level is, um, it is, you know, it depends. You may you may even get, you know, fish, fishing and game licenses for free, uh, your hunting license, all that good stuff. Uh, so go on your state's website and see what benefits you rate so that way you can Basically, you know, go do go do your thing, go fish, go hunt, and all that other good stuff. But yeah, and also in addition to that, you'll always hear me harping about is that hey, get your VA claims in and get all that good stuff situated because again, you gave your pound of flesh to this great nation of ours. You get your benefits and get and also get compensated for it. All right, sounds good. All right, and hey, we wouldn't be here. This show wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you listeners and as well as the Great American Constitution. So what do I mean by that is that, A, in this show, we support First Amendment, the right to bear uh, right to bear arms, freedom of food, all the other great things that the freedoms that the, that we as Americans uh, are born with these rights and that we're protected. So what does that mean? Hey, like, like, subscribe and follow. If not, that's fine. Make sure that check out the folks at sitchradio.com because without them, shout out to them. This show wouldn't be here. So thank you, Brian, and all all the awesome interns that help us out here uh, do the show. So 
check them out. They got some other great podcasts there. If this one doesn't suit your tickle your fancy, that's okay. Go ahead and uh, check something else out and support your local podcaster. Okay. So I think that's that's pretty much it. So with that being said, let's get this party started. Uh, so usually, you know, sometimes during the weekend, as uh, you know, we started thinking about this, what we're going to talk about and um, for the show. So back in uh, in 2022, as I had came back from uh, the middle working in the Middle East as a government contractor, I had gone on one of my trips to Latin America and Colombia uh, to visit family and such. Um, and on my way back, I was at a cafe having breakfast and really great cafe. It's one on the kind of the ritzier areas of uh, of Medellin. And uh, it also had a, a li- little little small library. And me being, you know, these last couple of years, I've really gotten into be- becoming an avid reader. There was this book, uh, you know, I went to check out the books, right? And I was like, okay, this is cool, whatever. And I, so I asked him, I'm like, hey, how much how much for this? And I think he said like, you know, uh, like 60,000 pesos, which I think at the time was like uh, 30 or 35 bucks. Some, you know, some ridiculous like that for, for the, for, you know, for these books. And, it, and I was like, man, that's a lot, which is in, in reality, it really isn't. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a, shit. I just pay, you guys heard me talk about audiobooks. I just paid 21 bucks for one book, uh, which is a great investment, by the way. You can never go wrong investing on yourself and, uh, and learning something. But here I am, you know, complaining about these three books being, too much, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, you know, Colombian currency, blah, 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 whatever. Anyways, I'm enjoying my breakfast. And you ever feel like something's calling you? You've been some, whether it is, you know, you're, you're buying something, a car, a piece of jewelry, hell, some, so, you know, something at Starbucks that you just trying to avoid because you just made a new year, a new year's promise. Anyways, this book, the, this book, this one particular book kept calling at me, and I was just, so I know in in between, and I did, I'm not making this up. In between having you know my breakfast, I would go back, I would look at the book and just check it out. Like, oh, what is this? You know, just and I'll put it back. And I'm like, no, no, it's too much. You know, screw it. You know, whatever. Anyways, um, towards the end, I some I'm like, you know what? Just these are books. Clearly, someone attracted you to to it. Buy. It. So one of them was, um, they're all in Spanish, by the way. One of them was trans, uh, translating. One was about meditation, but this one is, was written in Spanish. And then the other one that's called um, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harf Eckert. Anyways, um, grab the book. You know, I, I say, you know what, I'm just going to buy the books, whatever. Uh, and I took them with me. Well, as I was, um, after I got ready and I got in cab and made my way to the airport, uh, I was reading this book, you know, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And holy cow, I mean, I was, you, you've been hooked when you're reading something uh, and you just want to just chew all the way through it. But I mean, I was hooked on this book and just some of the great talking points and just some of the way uh, the writer appeals to the reader and made an impression to me. So, but one of the things that caught my eye and I've heard this before and, uh, but I really didn't. Uh, how can I say? Didn't implement it. Didn't really, uh, you know. I, I heard people say, you know, paying yourself first. Uh, hence the topic of the sh- of the of the show. So <clears throat> I said, you know, one of the talking points that he made said, "Hey, every piece of money that comes into you, you know, you you, you all you have to have four, you know, four accounts: one investment, one for your bills. Uh, I forget what the other two are." Uh, but the best one really, really struck with me and said, hey, you need to start taxing yourself 10 percent of everything that comes in. And uh, if you do that, by the end of the year, you should have some substantial account and be disciplined enough that, hey, that money is basically it's kind of like you you have um, an allotment already made. And. Um, you know, that money, you don't see it. So as soon as it comes in, tax yourself and put it in there. So 10 percent. Right. So I start. I started doing that, uh, putting myself, you know, taxing myself ten percent, anything and everything that came in. My my retirement pay from DFAS, my VA uh, claim, my payment for my civilian job, and any, you know, any all my other little investments and you know, passive money that I have coming in, ten percent. And um, 
you know, because that somebody that as somebody that that helps people with their finances and such, I mean, I know how to manage that, and you know, I rather borrow money at a low interest than pay, you know, go to a bank or whatever. So I have borrowed money from my four hundred one k, and because it, you know the it was super cheap to borrow the money, and basically it's going back to me. Anyway, so I was like, oh, I'm just going to pay this money off uh, sometime next year. Well, by implementing, just taxing myself by the 10%, and I, I borrowed it in June of 2022, around the same time I got the book. By December, I, I mean, I had completely paid off that that loan and still had made the rest of them and then had enough money to put in my other investment vehicles that I have, uh, putting that money away. Yeah, and I was like, holy cow, I mean, what else can I do? With, you know, what other things can I do with it? So I start, you know, in addition to taxing myself 10%, I tax myself uh, an additional 5% uh, and then just putting that money aside. So the point I'm trying to make here, folks, is that, and I think you've heard me say it before, compound interest is your, will be your best friend when it becomes, when it relates to investing. So... Uh, and if you haven't heard me talk about which I, when I had Evelyn uh, here on our show, she is uh, a representative for Primerica has been in the industry for 20 plus years. I mean, this lady knows her stuff and she's helped my, you know, my wife and I out uh, tremendously. And she's taught me some really cool stuff, uh, you know, how to invest our, our, our money. So what we, st- you know, you know, the rule of 72 is great. So basically, 72 will be your constant number, folks, right? That's your constant number. But if you divide that into whatever it is that your banking facility is paying you for you, keeping your money in the bank, that will give you the amount of time it will take that money uh, to double. So what I mean is that I think point, uh, uh, USA gives you uh, 0.001%, something ridiculous like that for keeping your money in a savings account, which is pretty much nothing. Uh, but let's, but there are other products out there that give you, you know, 3%, 2%, uh, some online bi- banks, whatever. So, but just divide that, let's say 1%, just for for, for, for giggles and stuff, is uh, if you divide, you know, that 1% into 72, it would literally take 72 years for $1,000. If you were just just put $1,000 in that account and, and let it sit, it would actually take 72 years for that money to double. However, if you start increasing, find different vehicles of how your money could double with better um, interest rate on it, obviously it's going to decrease decrease your time, right? So exponentially. So we, we you know, if if let's say you're getting twelve percent from you know one of you know mutual, for example, for, from a mutual fund or something like that, I mean your money literally will double every six years, which seems pretty feasible. So. You need to start paying yourself first, folks, and don't wait until pay off your bills and then let's see what's left over because life is going to get in the way. You may, oh, well, you know, hey, we're, you know, we have a little bit left. We're going to go out to eat. You know, we deserve a pizza because we've earned it. You're going to justify whatever it is to, to, you know, not irresponsibly, but you're going to justify why you should just use that money now instead of, instead of paying putting it somewhere where where it's going to make pay you some dividends. So if if all you can start is 1%, 2%, 3%, whatever, something is better than nothing because at the end of the day when you're you know when you're you know 65 59 and a half or 60 basically for retirement age do you want to be your kids financial burden or do you want to be so you know set set for success so that money will last you you know i asked the question i know i know starbucks uh helps angel (laughs) do stuff it helps me stuff too but i mean the genius that came up with hey let's charge more than five bucks for a mochaccino latte salted caramel you know latte whatever is a freaking genius man because I mean, I see a lot of people who, um, you know, buy that stuff every day. You multiply that on a daily basis. I mean, it's it's kind of like the old like the old saying when, uh, you know, me growing up, growing up, and even uh, in the nineties and sometimes in the two thousands, like if you smoke a pack a day, and if you were to save that money, you could have bought a house in X Y Z years. Well, same, th- you know, now 
Same thing applies if you every day put your money in Starbucks. I mean, Starbucks is 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 a is making a killing. You know what I'm saying? It's like they might as well be a bank. So, you know, I think you can treat yourself every once in a while. However, uh, you know, buy yourself a, a Keurig machine, and uh, you can make your own Starbucks at home. I mean, we had a Nespresso uh, when we were in working when we were in the Middle East, and then we were bought one here and one of those things. Uh, I mean, it, it'll be much cheaper than you. Uh, putting that money away, uh, giving that money away to somebody else. Just to, again, these are all just tips and things that uh, now that I'm in the, in, in the, in the finance industry for a little bit, uh, you know, I'm just sharing that, that knowledge with you. Imagine yourself where you could be. And by the way, uh, for us veterans, I'm just talking to all of us who are here in the crowd is that I know a lot of us have been smart enough to, uh, apply for our VA claims, uh, and if we didn't like the rating that they gave us, well, I know we used it, we're using an advocate to get that percentage bumped up a little higher uh, to get us to where where we want to be, whether it's 70, 80, 90, 100 percent, whatever. Because that extra, you know, what you could do with that extra money, and it, by the way, it is tax free. You can go ahead and grab some of those monies, and uh, put it in an investment vehicle to set up yourself, set yourself for for success because at the end of the day it's it's starting to save some money again put in it not in the bank because i hate to say it folks but banks banks are going to be made whole all right banks banks never lose so do you think that they're being very gracious by giving you that 0.001 percent or even three to four percent do you think that they're being very gracious because of that because your money you put your money in in that banking facility then they're going banks don't keep money and they don't have a vault in the back with a with you know with a ton of money in there they do not folks okay what you put your money in that money automatically it's going to get and you're getting a three four percent whatever you're getting that you know that little bit percent that bank is going to lend that money out to little johnny who's a pfc in the army or marine corps and they just went to oceanside and they're going to buy that $25,000 used car at a 30% interest rate, the bank is going <clears> to <throat> lend that money to little Johnny. And then they're going to ch charge him an ass ton of money on an, an, on an APR, right? Uh, char you know, for that loan. And then, then, then that money, Johnny's going to be paying that money. And then they're going to give you a three or 4%. And then your money just keeps be being, and then little Johnny borrows money. And then that money gets, being loaned out and, and it's out in space making funny for, you know money for other for the bank but not for you so the bank is not your it's not your friend so put that money in somewhere where it's going to grow for you and basically help you you know not end up being your kid's financial burden i grew up in a in a in a, in a hispanic home and i know that and it this is even to even to this day in colombia you can hear oh i can't you know, when I'm, you know, when I'm older, my kids are going to take care of me, you know, so on and so forth, which it is what it is. And I'm somewhat in a situation now where I love, you know, I love my parents, my parents, uh, my mom, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm helping her out. I'm taking care of her. However, I don't want to, you know, I'm trying, my wife and I, we're trying to do our best not to put our kids through that and prepare ourselves financially. Yeah, they may, they may end up taking care of us in the sense that, when I need help walking because now I got a bionic knee, whatever the case, but in regards to financing, then in that aspect, we're trying to set ourselves up so that way financially, you know, we're not a burden to them. And that's, that's what I mean, folks. So, but it's never too late to start saving. Now, as a matter of fact, if you are at the age of 49 or the age of 50, there is uh, the IRS, there's a catch up provision. So if you're starting to invest in a retirement account, like a traditional IRA or a Roth, you can actually put that money. There, there is a catch up provision for an extra $1,000. So I believe uh, for last year, it was 6,500. So if you were, uh, that's the max you can put into an IRA, uh, Roth or traditional. And then the, the catch up was an extra thousand. So you can put $7,500. I believe when, it went over this year to seven thousand, and the extra thousand. So that's eight. So if you maximize your 
your IRA, your retirement accounts every year. Again, it compound interest every six years, that money is going to do, do its thing. So it's more feasible to make that happen. And whether you can or can't, at least may, make an effort. So ask yourself, the, because I, again, these are things that I, we, uh, we, you know, my wife is really great at it. Um, and I, you know, I, I, you know, I started getting into it, uh, with her mainly. And then, then, you know, as we got together and I got into this industry and got licensed in it, then I obviously everything clicked. And these are concepts that we help other f families, uh, as well. So, but every, you know, if you can't max them out, then that's fine. Every little bit, every little help, uh, every little bit help. Uh, shit, I can't talk. Every little bit helps. <laughs> and um, if you got kids that are getting ready uh, that you want them to go to college, again, some of the tax laws changed this year as it, as it relates to uh, saving is that now uh, on on depending on the type of plan that you that savings plan for them, depending on the type of plan that you that you uh, set up for them. Uh, let's say if little Johnny, little Susie doesn't want to go to school anymore, then you can actually roll that into an IRA with eighteen thousand dollars, folks. Like I met, did, did I say that earlier? With eighteen thousand dollars in the account, and you and, and little Johnny, little Susie lets that money sit on you know for the next forty plus, you know, uh, thirty plus years. By the time they're in their 60s, they will be millionaires. Just by just the amount of 18, what eighteen thousand dollars can do. Even if you're in your early 20s, and uh, you know, maybe I'll try to post it. Uh, may, maybe I'll try to post it uh, if if I can. Uh, is uh, but by waiting just 10 years, I mean you, that that money. I mean, you still have a substantial amount. It'll be like in the six hundred, you know, six hundred, seven hundred thousand. But just by waiting ten years, that that amount again greatly decreases. Uh, had you have started doing it with, when I was eighteen. And by the way, um, uh, you know, I know Angel just put a comment out, out there about the tuition. Depending on what type of investment vehicle you use for your kids, whether it's a what they call a five two nine plan, you can actually use that money in in that plan tax free to pay for tuition for your kids for their private school for the laptops for you know many other things so you can actually do that and without taking any penalties some of those plans are structured like that so if you're interested uh, shoot me a dm and we'll be i can definitely plug you in and just give you some information okay so there are many vehicles out there that you can use um, to help yourself help your kids and set set them up for success because at the end of the day you know, finances can be can be tricky. It, it all brings back when I when I was in in the Marine Corps. I got two I got two quick stories. When I was obviously everybody knows you know that old, the old staff sergeant uh, that knows everything or your platoon sergeant. Hey, make sure you make sure you put in your Montgomery GI Bill. Make sure you you know you do this. I was in the generation where the TSP didn't come come on board until the late 90s, early 2000s. The TSP, the Thrift Savings Plan, was a product that was um, developed in the 80s for civilian government employees. So that's the, the, the history behind that. Later on, obviously, the military kind of caught on. Well, people can't retire from, completely retire uh, with their pension from, you know, not in this, in today's day economy. So they brought this on board to get service members to also start kind of like the 401k as an investment vehicle to get um, get you kind of kind of going. And by the way, if you don't know the history about the 401k, one of these days just you know look look in uh, Google the history behind it. It was developed in the 70s and 401k, 403b, those are all just tax codes from the IRS. It, it was it, it was developed as a basically as a tax haven for people with a lot of money. Companies caught up into this this stuff like hey if we do this, we get a huge benefit from the from 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 being taxed. And if we offer it to employees, yeah, you know, it's a win-win situation. We get the benefit; they get they get a little bit of you know a little bit of the benefits. But in the end, it's again, and with a four hundred one k, you you're not going to become a millionaire with a four hundred one k. I can I can guarantee you that. Okay, so but that's that'll be another show. So. 
But, you know, look up at the history behind all these vehicles and how they, they were developed. Because, you know, us service members, you know, the you can't retire again it, it depends i mean you can if you if you're in, become an expat just like john davis who's been on our show who's you know he's in dominican republic and all these other great places you can't retire outside of the u.s however in the u.s uh, you know you that money would be really really stretched even if you have your va benefits and stuff uh it, it, you know it takes a lot of discipline and and i hate to say it, most people most people are not because you know we got needs wants and all that good stuff so you have to be very disciplined at paying yourself and uh you know figuring out a budget it's it's eye opening when, when actually when you do one you're like holy cow i didn't know my money was going there why do i have this what do i have that and uh and, and then you you start finding money when i had so most of you that personally know me i was um i got i i came into the marine corps in the early nineties, and then uh, and then I get out. My, I get out after my first enlistment. When I when I and then a year about a year and some change later, I came back in. Not because I had to or whatever. I just I generally missed the Marine Corps and I came back in. So I was at a truck company uh, right there in um, Camp Pendleton. Shout out to to the Marines at um, Camp not Camp Horno uh, Polk. No shit. I don't even know. Anyways, at one of the camps out there, and um, and that's where I met Scott Gilman. But I had there was this one Marine in the in the platoon that he always this dude always seems broke. Now he didn't borrow money, he didn't seem, you know, not in that not in that sense, but the dude literally always ate at the chow hall. Uh net when when the roach coach used to come into the motor pool, he would avoid it. Uh, he did smoke, and that was I guess that, you could say that was his only vice. And uh, but not much, and he didn't do much. He didn't do much, and he he was actually from California. Anyways, um, and I want I once asked him. I'm like, hey man, you know, you always seem like you keep to yourself a lot, and but like you're broke. I mean, you know, I I said it like that. He goes, yeah, no, I know, I I can see I can see that. Yes, I do. Uh, but I I got a game plan. I'm like, yeah, you know, tell me about it. He goes, well. I'm paying myself. I'm like, what, what does that mean? Because yeah, so when my pay when I get when I get paid, I take half of my paycheck and I put it in my investments that I have through uh, through my broker and and everything. And I was like, what? Because yeah, and then the other half, you know, that's what I that's what I used to live on on to my next paycheck. I my all my bills are paid. Um, I have allotments for all of them. He goes, yeah. My only vice is I smoke cigarettes, but I pay. Obviously, I, I allocate my funds for that, and you know, I I don't use a roach coach. I I got I, my chow is free. I um yeah, I live in the barracks. I'm you know I'm not married yet. My, my girlfriend's in L.A. and I just go home on the weekends and we just do our thing, and that's that's pretty much it. So I'm like, well, how much is that you're gonna have by the time you? you know, he goes, are you gonna reenlist? Goes, no, nah, I'm you know I'm I'm gonna get out. And um, after you know, after my enlistment, but he, I think he goes, this is how much I ha I'll have by the time I get out. And it was like over a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, this he broke down that plan. I mean, to the T. And I was like, holy cow! I mean, this. And he told me about his his investments. You know, the type of vehicles that he was using. Blah blah. I mean, this. And we're talking like almost twenty. You know, over twenty years ago, but <laughs> over twenty years ago. But this kid had a, you know, and he he did. I mean, I went on uh, to another unit, and uh, but this kid, you know, pretty much he stuck to his guns, and um, and I asked him, so what is he going to do? Well, you know, uh, I'm I'm going I'm I'm going on I'm getting a degree on business entrepreneurship, and um, uh, I think I'm going to become an investor. I'm like, God damn! So this kid had a had a pretty for for a lance corporal, a two time lance corporal because he did. Uh, he, the the reason why he was getting out because he was in the fat body program, you know he was overweight. And those of you who who know those Marines or soldiers that are on that program, uh, sponsored by the by your company office, you know it's it's the most miserable program that you could be on because that's just basically getting your ass, in, in, you know, getting your 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 thingy to the ground by your company first sergeant or, or whoever else has that has has the awesome duty of messing with the people who are overweight 
Uh, so, but this kid had a plan and I, and dude stuck to it. And so I commended, um, I commend them for, for that stuff. So, and that's kind of what I, you know, uh, what I thought about, about today is, Hey, you, we have to pay ourselves first. You, it's not being selfish. It's not, you know, I'm sure your budget will, uh, if you look deep into your budget and, and I hope everybody here uh, has, has done some type of a uh, budget. If you, if you would like a, a, an Excel financial worksheet, Shoot me a DM. I'll be and you know, shoot me a DM with your email, and now I'll, I'll I'll send you this. Uh, it's a doc, and you can plug it in, and at the end, it'll spit out what is it that you you know where your money is going. And uh, if, you, if you want some some additional information, let us know. We'll get you all. We'll get you all plugged in. At least it'll be an eye opening situation, and then you you know we'll set you up for success. So, uh, but. That's it for today, folks. So what are we going to do? What's what's our homework for from here on out is that any monies that comes in. So go if you have USA, very simple, set up an additional account. You can actually put a new name on it and say, and I call my investments or I or tax tax investment. So you know, I'm taxing myself and I'm going to invest that money. Put that money in there as soon as it hits. Don't touch that money. Okay. Give me. Give me 30 days, Angel. Give me 30 days and see where you're at. Actually, no, I need you to give me two months. Give me two months. Be solid about it. And then tell me where we're at. And then we'll go, we'll, we'll go from there. And then and then we can, you know, maybe help help you out. So if you've been rude, and so that's pretty much it for today. I don't want to keep talking. I already I already hear Brian already getting ready to press the button. So if you've been ruminating, a lot of stuff, going into a bad place. Please don't, you know, reach out to me, reach out to TRICARE, reach out to the VA, suicide hotline. Because at the end of the day, it's all great and dandy that people are doing some push-up challenges or whatever, but that's not going to bring you back. So please don't be a statistic. Don't, you know, don't commit suicide. We need you here. You matter. We love you. We care for you. All right, folks. So that's it for today. Ice to mass. Dice to Get some shots. Peace.